started um, with our presentation for everybody. Welcome to UC Davis. Welcome um, transfer students and first year students. Um, we're happy to have you here and I hope that you guys are excited about um, orientation and classes starting tomorrow. Um, we're just going to kind of go over a couple of, of things um, with you. Oops. Okay, now I'm having more. I can't. Uh, Lisa, I can't go to the. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, who are we? Who are we? Honestly, what is like, who gamma are we? biology? <laughs> right. Um. So, the um. My name is Elvira Galvan Hack, and I am your um academic advisor. So I'm your major advisor. Um, you come to me for anything and everything that you have questions for, um, and then I can direct you anywhere you need to go. Um, but I handle all everything to do with our major um, requirements. So everything that you have for major requirements is what um, you come to me for. And then, like I said, I can answer any questions you want. Um, um, my hometown is Dixon, California, so I'm, I'm close by. I grew up just about 10 miles away in a small um, agricultural town here. Um, my favorite part of ABI is getting to know my students um, and being able to um, positively impact your success. So my goal is to make sure that you have a successful quarter every quarter and at the end of your, your time here, whether it's two years or four years, um, that you actually complete everything, you get have a great experience at UC Davis and within our major. Um, and then you can go on um, you know, to what you want to do, like our master advisor says when you grow up. So uh, my hobbies and interests are playing board games. I love playing board games. Um, we have a family board game day um, on Sundays once a month um, with my grandkids and all my brothers and sisters. Um, and I collect, um, I, I love collecting paperweights of rocks and crystals. And my dogs, well, I was going to show them to you, but um, unfortunately they're not here, they're outside. Um, but I have two dogs. One, Max, he's a great Dane Shepherd mix, so he's pretty big. He's really smart. And um, Biscuit, who's a pit bull boxer mix, and is like a two-year-old, always getting in trouble. Okay. Elvira, in the chat, people are wanting a crystal tour. Oh, yeah, okay. People would pay oh. for a crystal tour, actually. <laughs> oh, darn. Mm -hmm. okay. Madeline, I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to. Uh, <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have to put some kind of a, a little um, tour for you because I have them all over my house, all over. I have them all, you know, so yeah. definitely. That's cute. Definitely will happen. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. So I guess it's my turn. Um, well, I'm Lisa. Hello, everybody. I'm going into my last year of school here at Davis, so I'm a student like you guys. Um, I'm one of the peer advisors, me and Kayla. Um, and let's see, so on top of being an ABI major, I'm also a wildlife minor, and I am a pre-vet student, and I'm applying this cycle, so stressful, but kind of exciting. Um, some cool stuff. Let's see, and then, so I was born and raised in South San Francisco, California. Um, it's a town below San Francisco. It's not the bottom part of San Francisco, but it's like under that. Um, Let's see, and then I chose to be an animal biology student because, well, at first I didn't really know what I was doing, to be honest, I was just a high schooler trying to go to college. Um, but after getting to know the major and all the advisors, I really liked the idea of the fact that I was able to choose and create my own college path. You know, I wasn't on a fixed track to do something that maybe I kind of liked. I was able to do exactly what I wanted to do. Um, and as you guys know, we all do research here as animal biology students, and I do research with Dr. Cruz Arengo at the vet school. Um, we use mouse models to study uh, multiple sclerosis, and I'm currently doing my practicum there. And aside from research, I enjoy playing the clarinet. Uh, I, well, when school was still happening on campus, I was with the orchestra, and I did some chamber music, cool stuff like that. Um, and then I also, got into indoor rock climbing for like winter quarter, but then, you know, that's not very COVID friendly anymore. So yeah. And then for pets, I have five rats and a bearded dragon and I have had one of them like running all over me. That's why I've been like kind of antsy over here. This one's Kuske. Um, 
And let's see, the other four rats I have, they're back there, but they're all babies, so they're kind of crazy. I've got Snoofy, uh, Claude, Rufus, and <laughs> my boyfriend named one Linear B. Couldn't convince him out of it, but okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. His naming drops are gone. <laughs> it's pretty bad. But he's a sweet rat. Um, yeah, and then, uh, Reggie's the bearded dragon. He's, he likes to wake up late, so couldn't bring him up here, but yeah. So that's me. Um, I'm looking really, I'm really looking forward to getting to know you guys. So, yeah, me and Poopsky. Lisa, a couple of, um, there was a question in the chat if you were in Davis. I am in Davis. Okay. I'm going to be staying here. they want to meet here. your rats. They'd like to meet your rats. I know. Well, this one over here is very excited to see everyone, so. <laughs> and it looks like he's going to jump off my chair. I think we're more excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm starting my fourth year uh, this year in this beautiful major. I'm also pre-vet. Um, I didn't know if I was going to stick with that, honestly, throughout this whole thing, but I, I figured that is what I'm really most passionate about. Um, I'm from Sacramento, California, so not too far away. I go home pretty often. Well, I guess before COVID hit, I went home pretty often. Um, why did I choose ABI? So I want to be honest with everybody. I did not know the difference between animal biology and animal science when I <laughs> came to Davis, okay? Just a disclaimer, I did not know. I genuinely said eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Um, but thank God I chose this major because there, like Lisa was saying, there's honestly so much you can do with it. Um, and it's not just pre-vet. Not everyone you meet is going to be pre-vet. And honestly, you're probably not gonna know what you wanna do either like uh for my research i'm at the tucker lab and i'm doing um research on cattle behavior and their feeding behaviors never thought that i would uh work with large animals i've always been really interested in small animals but cows are so cute cows are like big dogs almost they're so weird and great um i see a question on what is the difference between the two majors we could i could dive into that a little bit oh yes cows 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 cow love in the chat um the main difference between the majors is our research component we are a research-based major uh like lisa and i were both doing our senior or yeah we're both doing our, our practicum projects now um and so that's like the main difference that you have to complete your project to graduate and I promise you, it's not as bad as it sounds because I wanted to switch to animal science when I was like, I need to do a project to graduate. No, I just want to graduate. Um, uh oh, I think we lost. Sound I think we lost you, Kayla. Kayla, we lost your sound. Oh. oh no. Okay, you're back. Hello. Okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um <laughs> interests. I can you still hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Um I love roller skating. I got my own pair of roller skates uh about two years ago. And now we had so much time during COVID, I've just been skating all over Davis. So if you're in Davis and you see a girl on some rose gold roller skates, say hello, it might be me. It might not, but make friends, talk to strangers. Uh, and then my favorite animal are cats. I wanna, I wanna specialize in feline medicine. Um, so I could talk to you privately about the Tucker Lab and cats, cats, cows and cats. Honestly, there's so much love. I love this. But yeah, cats are big and small. Uh, I think it'd be really cool to do like um, exotic cats as well. So yeah, that's enough rambling for me. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. 
So now it's your turn. Um, we're gonna we're gonna put you in breakout rooms. Um, we're gonna break out a little bit, and each one of us will go ahead and um, uh, join each um, in each breakout room. And then the we're gonna want to hear from you, your name, your hometown, um, any new quarantine hobbies, and show off your pets if you have pets, or if you don't have a pet, what would be um, your ideal pet or favorite animal? Okay. So I'm gonna put you in breakout rooms now. Um, oops. Lisa, could you, um, where's my, I can't find my breakout rooms. Okay. There we go. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do three breakout rooms and um, we will meet you back there. Oh, boy. Okay, more technical difficulties. All right. I think I have it now. Did we get in there? Okay. Wait. Uh, I got sent back. Yeah, me too. Oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay. Let me do this again then. <laughs> I had my breakout room. I don't know what happened to yours. <laughs> um... Close it 30 seconds. Okay, we don't want that. Why is it closing them now? Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm, it, it, um, orientation is texting me at the same time here. Um, why? Breakout rooms, okay. Oh, okay, open all rooms. Okay, got it. All right. I think we got it now. Sorry. Hi. 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 Oh, I'm glad you, some of you have your cameras on. That's good. Okay. So um, I hope you're all doing well, and I really apologize for the technical difficulties we had in a little bit um, uh, in a minute ago and and sorry if i pause for a minute because um the orientation keeps um i am me me also because we're having some problems um okay so um why don't anybody can go first if you'd like um your name hometown um and any any um new quarantine hobbies you've picked up um and if you have a pet Feel free to show them off um, or tell us about them. Or if you don't have a pet, um, what kind of pet you would like and or what your favorite animal is. Okay. Who wants to go first? Anybody? I can. I don't know. Okay. I think it's like lagging or something. I'm not sure. Can you guys hear me though? Okay, you're breaking out a little bit. Okay, you're breaking out. Uh oh. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I'm like lagging a lot. Um, so hi, my name is Allison. Um, I'm from Livermore, California, and if you don't know where that is, it's in the East Bay. Oh my gosh, I'm unstable. Can you guys still hear me? You're, you're a little low. Well. Unstable. Hey, why don't we have somebody else go and then so that you can kind of stabilize a little bit and then we can kind of go from there. Okay. Can okay. you still hear Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. First it happens and I have to go. I, I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, do you want to yeah. try it again, Allison? Okay. Yeah. So. That's good. Okay. So are you better? There you are. Okay. You're, you're on mute now. Can't hear you. You're on, you're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm there we go. <laughs> um, which is in the East Bay area. It's 
if you're still not sure, I describe Livermore as like kind of like Napa, but like less fancy. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm in the dorms right now, but I have two cats and they're calicos. Oh, beautiful. So, yeah, I have like photos of them. Oh, but look at that. Oh, they're cute. I miss them a lot. So, yeah. And then for quarantine hobbies, <laughs> yeah, I just like started um, watching more TV shows, honestly, like I didn't do anything really too interesting, but yeah, I'm super excited for school to start and to meet you all. Same here, we're very excited to meet you. Okay, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Go next. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'll go. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm from Simi Valley, California. Um, I haven't really picked up very many hobbies. I kind of just do whatever each day. Um, and then as for pets, I can't bring them in here right now, but I have two huge Rottweilers, Ooh, um, but they're chilling in the backyard right now. <laughs> okay. Who wants to go next? Uh, I'll go next. Um, so hi, my name is Maria Vasquez. Uh, I'm in Monterey, California. You know where the Monterey Bay Aquarium is, basically there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, any hobbies? I usually play my instruments. I have a violin, a piano, and a hybrid guitar uke. Wow. Um, so I play that whenever I have the feeling to. And, um... I have a pet. She's right here. She's a Shiba Inu. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, she's cute. Look at that. She is adorable. Cute. There you go. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you. Who wants to go next? I can go. Um, my name is Kaya. Ow, my cat just bit me, sorry. Uh oh <laughs> um, I'm from Roseburg, Oregon. It's like this small town of like 3,000 people. I also oh, grew up in San Diego and Honolulu. Um, I've been doing cooking a lot recently during quarantine, and this is my cat. <laughs> He's upset with me. His name, ow, oh, so rude. His name is Moose. Yeah, his name is Moose. And then my dog, my bed's a mess, but he's sleeping. Onyx, come here. That's my dog. <laughs> yeah, he's a shepherd mix, so. Oh. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, he's cute. Okay, next. I can go next. Uh, I'm Lara. Can, can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, I'm Lara. I'm from Washington on, on the Western Coast, uh, but I just moved to Davis and during the quarantine, I basically just spent time on um, like moving stuff because I have a lot of books and yeah, it's, so it's a lot of work. And I have a cat. She is pretty sensitive to the new environment. So she's hiding um, oh. under my bed during the daytime and cannot like make a mask at night. So it's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> well, I pick up a hobby like um, as biking because when we arrive at Davis, it's really common to have a bike in back area and it's not really common um, in Washington, but I thought that's pretty fun. So have you gotten around to see a lot of Davis yet? Uh, not yet. Um, it just maybe just some grocery store, but I plan to do that. Yeah. Oh, good. Great. That sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. I'll go next. Okay, so my name is Tiffany. I'm from San Jose. Some hobbies that I like to do is read. And this is my dog. His name is Ruffles. I don't know if you can. Oh, look, he's cute. Ruffles. He's a pit bull. Oh, nice. Okay, up next. I'll go next. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm from Union City, California. 
uh what a hobby not really a hobby but the thing i picked up over quarantine is exercising because i'm like i was trying to like make exercising a habit so i don't fall victim to freshman 15. <laughs> it's been working exercising is fun kind of love it and i have my dog behind me he's just sleeping Say hi to everyone. Hello, oh, dog. Oh, look at it. Oh, now you said, why'd you wake me up? <laughs> yeah, he's very angry. <laughs> oh, cute. And what's his name or her name? His name is Presto. I'm kind Presto. of a music nerd, so uh, yeah, I named him Presto. <laughs> yeah. I like him. That's cute. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of animals. I'm so excited. Okay, next. I can go oh, next. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> um, my I'm Madison or Maddie, whatever, um, and I'm from Tracy, California, which is I don't know how to explain it, but a little small town. And then, um, a quarantine habit that I picked up, I've been painting, which is cool. And same with Emily, that she. Oh wait, no, sorry, wrong person. Someone said biking. And that, yeah. And then um, I, my cat isn't in here, but I have like a Siamese mix cat. If you can just imagine that. <laughs> oh, wow. That's great. Lots of cats and dogs. Nothing too, you know, unusual yet. So nothing exotic yet. Um, we, ha we have to get together and put a big animal type picture of all of our pets in one picture, you know? Do that one time, have a, a, a pet play date. Um, who's next? I can go. Um, my name is Kaylee. I am from Orange County and over quarantine, I've been doing a lot of cooking and I'm currently in the dorms right now. So my children aren't with me, but I have pictures on my phone. I don't know if you can see it. That's my guinea pig. Her name is Aww. Daisy. And then I also have a cat. Her name's Athena. She's a little black cat. She's about one years old. But yeah, I've been missing my children a lot now that they haven't been able to be here. But actually, my friend um, just painted them. So they've been sitting oh. in my room here the whole time. So that's been really wow. nice. Wow. Yeah. How beautiful. Yeah, thank you. So, nice. Yeah. <laughs> really nice. Okay, anybody else? I can go next. Okay. Um, so I'm Lainey. I'm also from Livermore, California, like Allison. Oh. It's like, Do you guys yeah. know each other? No, no. I, I, I went to school at Amador, which is in Pleasanton. Oh, it's okay. a town over, so I, I just lived in a different part. Oops. I have three dogs. I don't know if you can see this because it's on my phone, but uh, here's Mickey. Oh, cute. Here's Polly. And then here's Mochi. She's pretty oh. fat. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't really pick up any new habits over quarantine. I watched a lot more TV. I watched a lot more like anime and uh, like just a lot of game shows and stuff. I don't know. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That sounds great. Okay. Who's next? I can go next. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Katie. Um, I didn't pick up anything new over quarantine. I've been working a lot. I work as a vet assistant, so I've been doing full time since I had the opportunity. Um, and my pets, I have a little dog named Woody who's sleeping next to me. Let's see if I can show you guys. That's Woody. <laughs> oh, nice and comfortable. Yes, he is. <laughs> and I'm from Auburn, California, which is like an hour away from Davis. Okay. I can go. Hello everyone, my name is Jaina and I'm currently studying remotely from Santa Barbara, California. And I, I've i taken up embroidering. So I've done a couple Ooh, of my nice. videos, really cool. And then I have right here, this is Kiwi. He's a green-cheeked conure. Oh, look at that. Yes, and love. I have. Hmm? Just and saying I, I love him. <laughs> yes, oh, he wow. Has, some attachment issues, so yeah, always has to be near me, unfortunately, <laughs> for sometimes. And then I have nine other pets, um, four dogs. I have one chicken, 
one guinea pig, and two other um, uh, parakeets, and a cat. Wow, a yes. full house. Yes, full house, definitely. Wow, how exciting. <laughs> I bet they keep you very well entertained then, right? Oh, yes. Very well entertained. <laughs> okay. <laughs> great. That sounds great. Thank you. I can go next. So, hi, my name is Eileen. I'm from Bakersfield, California. So, it's like four hours away from Davis. So, I'm living in the dorms right now, but some new quarantine habits have picked up. We're, we're painting, skating, and like working out. And my pets, so I have a teacup Moshi. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so she's a Maltese and a Shih Tzu. And then I have a Golden Retriever and a German Shepherd. She currently just had a litter too, so I left. So that was really hard. Cause they were just, yeah, but yeah. Puppies are so cute when they're little. And still when they get older, but they get their personalities and it's great. Uh, okay, who wants to go next? I can go next. Um, I'm Sage. I'm from Colorado. But oh, wow. I'm actually staying in the dorms right now. Uh, I picked up a lot of, like, baking, like, brownies and cookies over quarantine, which is really fun. And then I have six pets. I have three dogs and three cats. I don't know if you guys can see. There's some of them. And then... There's my two cats, and there's my third cat. Nice. Cute, cute. Okay, who's next? Did we get everybody yet? I, don't... I can go next. Okay, good. Hi, I'm Serena. I'm from Sacramento, California. Um, I started cooking a lot more, a lot more like authentic kind of like Mexican dishes. Um, I have a red eared slider turtle and I also have a chihuahua. I don't know where she's at right now, but I can hear her snore. I can hear her snoring, but I don't know if you can see as well. I do have a little picture of her. Oh, so. that's cute. <laughs> okay, who's next? I can go next. Okay. Um, my name is Madeline. I go by Maddie though. Um, I'm from San Diego, California. Um, my pets are, I have a horse, his name is Fabio, this is him, he's the most precious thing in the history of the world, he's beautiful. Oh, oh look at I, that. Cute. I miss him very, very much, but he's, he's an older guy, he's retired, and I was like, uh, probably, probably better to keep him at home where he's like more comfortable, because traveling when they're a little bit older is riskier so I wanted to make sure that he was happy and didn't have to go up here and then I was like I'd love to go to Davis for vet school too but um I'm like if I have to go to vet school across the nation I don't want to uproot his life again so I found right. a spot that I really like for him there and then I have a dog his name's Duke uh he's a German shepherd oh. mix if you can see it I miss him very much too, and I have a leopard gecko at home. Well, technically, Ooh. he's my brother's, but his name's Stitch, like Lilo and Stitch. Oh, yeah, cute. but he doesn't, he doesn't like my brother very much. Um, <laughs> so he became more my lizard, and I thought about bringing him up, but I wasn't sure what the rules were. So if I'm allowed to, I might just bring him up, back up, like for one and break. <laughs> that would be. Oh, fun. and quarantine habits. Uh, been trying to exercise more. I've been painting a little bit, and that's been fun, but pretty much the same old thing. Lots of artists. Nice, nice. That's great. Next. Anybody I left? Can go. <clears throat> okay. I can go next. <laughs> Sorry. All right, great. No, no, that's okay. Yeah, um, I'm Darcy. I'm from Sacramento, um, California. And um, quarantine habits, I've started crocheting. Uh, I'm not very good at it. I'm still only on squares, um, but it's, it's coming along. I'm improving. Um, and then I have one cat myself, and then I'm living at home, and we have two cats, so a total of three cats. Um, my cat, her name is Moonstone. Uh, let's see. And here she is. I hope you can see her. And that's Moonstone, and I love her very much. <laughs> and then our other two cats, we have a Duluth Calico. Um, her name is Lucy, 
And then another black cat, um, her name is actually Lainey. <laughs> and yeah. Sorry, I, I forgot I muted myself. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I can go next. Hi, I'm Danae. I'm from LA. Um, some quarantine habits I picked up. I've been cooking and baking a lot more. And my dog's not in my room right now, but he's in my home screen. And that's my dog. He's two years old. And um, he's also named Mochi. Thank you. Okay, how many people do we have left? Do we have more? I lost count. Yeah, I can go next. Okay. Um, uh, my name is Bita. Um, I'm from Orange County originally from Irvine. So that's like six hours away. Um, I moved here a couple of days back. So I'm just still getting used to the apartment and Davis and all that. Um, during quarantine, I started cooking a lot more and I also started gardening a lot. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to buying a lot of plants and just make like turning the house into just like a greenhouse. Um, so that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, I currently don't have any pets, but before I moved here, I was taking care of my advisor's um, uh, Indian stick insects and they were oh, horrifying, wow. but they were really nice to um, just take care of. They were, even though they looked really scary, <laughs> they were very uh, polite. So oh, nice. It's really nice. Good. Uh, we have um, the Bohart Museum, and they have a lot of, uh, they have a live petting zoo, so they have a tarantula, they have some stick figures, and they're very popular with um, uh, with the kids that come in to the Bohart Museum, with, with everybody, because you get to kind of touch and play and, you know. I've heard, them. yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Are they, op they're not open during quarantine, I'm assuming. Um, well, they're, they're open during a certain time, but I don't know what the rules are for, you know, for going in. They've um, done all their online events, so I don't think that they're open right now, but we can, I can check for that and let you guys know. Ooh, yes, please. Okay, all right. Um, do we have anybody left still? Like I said, I lost count a little bit. There. I can go next. Oh, yay! Uh, Hi, Ryan. Hello, my name is Ryan. Um, my hometown is Hercules. And for quarantine hobbies, I guess I got into cooking again and baking stuff whenever I'm bored. And for my pets, I have a dog named Apollo. I don't have him here right now, but I have a picture of him in his like little <laughs> outfit. Oh, look, though, that's cute. So he likes to wear outfits. Very cute, yeah. He's chilling somewhere else, though. Okay. Um, do we have anybody else left? So, so uh, my name is Jenna. I'm from Orange County, California, near Disneyland. And um, some hobbies I picked up. Um, baking, cooking, painting. Um, I have a dog, a cat, and a parrot, but they're not with me right now. Okay, next. Anybody else? No? So we, it looks like we have um, some bakers in there. Um, a lot of um, you know, a lot of try to exercise and, you know, the, the new hobbies that you pick up, we were also talking about, you know, you could always create some kind of a, um, we do, we do a virtual game day board games. Like I said, I like to play board games. And when COVID first started, because my mother's elderly, we all got together at my house, my three sisters and some of my nieces and nephews. And then we all zoomed, um, for, board games and we played Loteria with my mom for like two or three games just to kind of keep her entertained since nobody could see her. Um, so that was kind of fun. Um, so you guys can do that too, that, that, you know, put something up and say, hey, you know, is there any other animal biology students that like to paint or want to take a walk, a virtual walk or a bike ride or something like that. So that, that way, you know, you're not doing, you know, by yourself, you could take a virtual walk, you can do things like that too. Okay, so we're going to return to the main, um, uh, out of the breakout room. Anybody want to have anything special? We have people from all over um, California and a couple of other places too. So this is great. Uh, we're going to go ahead. Oh, let me let, let me let one more person in since we have somebody waiting. Hi there. Um, so do you want to go ahead and tell us about yourself? Um, your name, where you're from, hobbies, and um, any pets you can show them, tell us. Um, if you have a pet, show us pictures or um, 
uh, let us know what your favorite animal is. Oops, did I lose her? I think so. Sorry about that. So is there anybody less, left that hasn't um, got to tell us about yourselves yet? No? Okay. We're going to go ahead and leave the room and go back to the rest of the group. It was great hearing from everybody and getting to know you guys a little bit, and I hope to get to know you a lot better during your time here, definitely. Okay, so we're going to leave the breakout room. Okay. So, um, are we all back now? I'm thinking that we are all back. Oh, no, just my group is. I guess everybody else had more to talk. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about, before we go on to the next slide, um, what we're doing next. Okay, there we go. I'm trying to. All right. Um, so those of you that just joined us a few minutes ago, um, feel free to um, let us know about you, um, your name, hometown, um, a new quarantine hobby, and you could show off um, your pets or um, tell us about your pets, show us pictures and or a favorite pet um, or a favorite animal that you'd like to, to have. So go ahead. Um, anybody who joined us late? Mark? Um, let's see here. Anybody else want to tell us about themselves? Anybody who came in late a few minutes ago? No? Okay. I think uh, it's only the people from our breakout rooms that are in here. Oh. We only, it only says we have 26 people. Right, and, and I just let in a couple of more, so I was hoping that we had more. I guess not. Okay. Why is it only us? Oh, probably because the other groups aren't done yet, most likely, since we have other. Let's see here. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, as soon as they come back, we'll, we can get started again. I'm trying to get back to them. Oops, okay. We'll leave that one up next. Okay, I'm gonna close all rooms now so we can all come back. So talk amongst yourself. Let's talk a little bit until we all get back together um, and keep going with our presentation. So um, we talked, to, uh, several of you were in the dorms um, getting settled in now um, on campus. Um, probably haven't been out too much, doing a little too much, but you know, we have a lot of things going on over the, over the fall quarter. Um, we're gonna, um, the university, you know, you so I know that those of you that are in the dorms have strict rules and stuff, but. You guys are going to have a great time. This is going to be a great fall. It's a little strange and unusual, but um, it, you know we're we're getting going here, and we're finding lots of great things. Oh, here they go. Okay. Right. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your rats. Uh -huh. Okay, so we have an invitation here. Anybody who's a transfer student and wants to join a uh, a group, a uh, group me, um, message me your number. So there's um, Anika. Kinzel on here. And Anika, if you want to um, announce that to the rest of the majors, you can always send us um, your information and, and the request, and we can put it on our Facebook page. And then we can also send it to the student listserv so that you can get more participants there also. Okay? Okay, thanks. All right. Um, hi, Lisa. Hi. Our group was really fun. 
we saw so many I know me too it was great our group was great they were showing us pictures of pets and their actual pets um we had some um dogs cats birds um and somebody had eight or nine pets right something like that a lot a whole family oh, we, full. <laughs> we had someone with like nine dogs in it wow oh my God. <laughs> i know that's <laughs> my heart <laughs> okay hi kayla hello how was your breakout room so we were in the same breakout room lisa and i oh, yeah no. yeah someone had 30 oh. hamsters <laughs> wow <laughs> that's amazing hamsters. that's great wow okay <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot all right so we're just gonna um go through next lisa's gonna talk a little bit about um how to uh, find the abi community yes um so I know we all just got to know each other, but to keep in touch and to meet more people, we have a bunch of ways you guys can do that. So um, I don't know if any of you guys don't know already, but we have the Animal Biology Discord that we made recently. Um, there's like a hundred something people on there already, but if you need the link, it's in the newsletter every week, so you can find it there. Um, there's a bunch of different rooms, so there's something for everyone. There's like a general, you know, a chat for pet pics. That one's my favorite um and there's chats for each class of students so like you know class of 21 22 23 so on um stuff for like pre-vets to ask me and lisa you know all that kind of jazz and we check it pretty regularly so i would highly recommend you guys use it um and let's see so what else we have the animal biology club um i think it's currently on a hiatus uh, but normally during the year, we always do a bunch of fun activities throughout the quarter. We usually do four or five throughout, like, each each quarter we'll have, like, four or five events. Um, in the past, we've done professional mixers, so you can meet a mentor. We've done a field trip to the Sacramento Zoo. Um, we've had guest speakers before. Like, people, I think we had people from, like, the Orphan Kitten Project talk to us before. That was really fun. Um, oh, yeah, and here's some pictures. Although they're not, they don't seem quite clear. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, so the middle ones are trips to the Sac Zoo, our speakers down there. Um, on the left, that was when we went to the Bohart Museum of Entomology. That was super cool. Everyone got to like touch the bugs and stuff. Like not my cup of tea, but I thought it was really cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then on the right, that was when we went to a ranch in Vacaville and we helped them do a lot of cleanup and chores and play with the horses and all that cool stuff. Um, oh, and then, yeah, for the Discord, uh, I think I already had a Discord before this, but I think you have to make an account on Discord. And then after that, you can join um, via the link that is posted in the newsletter every week. So it should be in your email somewhere. Um, and it's very casual so everyone's welcome you know talk about whatever you want post memes whatever um and then yeah yeah please <laughs> if you have any, uh diff other suggestions for like maybe a, a channel that you'd like to see that we don't already have on the discord um like something more specific we are definitely open to suggestions we yeah just want, we just want you guys to have what uh you want to see and, and stuff yeah um yeah and i think that was it that was on the last slide except we also have a facebook group um or it's like a facebook page it's not like a group chat um but if you find um if you look for animal biology on facebook you'll be able to find us there and you can follow us um yeah and yeah, kelly would you like to talk about these a little more yes yes okay so the facebook page will be getting uh regular updates with um as the quarter goes on with different resources that you can use um i think the major we're going to come up with a few different um getting together ideas on zoom of maybe like a study night or etc cetera, etc cetera. uh we can all discuss different options of how we would want to like uh, meet up and stay together but you can definitely join uh follow the facebook page and then if you haven't already seen this, this should look familiar, hopefully, if you're getting our weekly newsletters. Um, I definitely recommend, I, I mean, I would hope everyone's looking at the weekly newsletter. 
Um, there's always a really cool animal fun fact. And at the end of the newsletter, we tell you that you can send in your own animal fun facts and you can be featured in the newsletter. Like, well, who doesn't want to be featured with their animal fun fact? Like, come on, that's so cool. Um, and, but also, we also put uh, different internships, opportunities, scholarships, grants. Um, I actually found the, the research that I'm doing now, I found through the newsletter. I'm just saying. Back, back before I wasn't even up here. So um, there are some cool, cool things that we do put out. So uh, look out for that. Um, yeah, some internships are being offered virtually and stuff. So that's where, and if aside from our weekly newsletter, when we do get uh, opportunities and such, we can put that on the Facebook page and the Discord. Yeah, there's a lot of different okay. option. Yeah, um, I subscribe to the newsletter. So we send that's sent through the ABI uh, listserv, right? How do you? How would you add yourself to so the listserv? So you should have already. So let me just kind of let you know. You should have already been added to the listserv at the beginning when you first um, when we first when you first got admitted into our major. So if you have not, if you're not getting our newsletter, you should have already received at least one or two by now um, and or any ma emails that we're sending out, then please email me um, and then I will go ahead and add you manually so we can get you on there um, in case we missed anybody, but everybody should be already added. And if you have an animal fun fact that you want to tell us about, go ahead and add it into the chat and we'll read them off as we go along. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> definitely, let, you know, let us know some animal fun facts and then we'll read some off um during in between some of our our presentation beautiful um beautiful we have a couple of other questions um, um somebody asked about uh, a dairy uh internship that was on the newsletter um we post a lot of things in the newsletter like that so yes and they're open to any student um, so it, it doesn't matter what major you're in, you can apply to all of those. And if you need extra information or, or maybe, you know, the link doesn't work, let us know and we'll get you the, the exact information. We'll send it out to you directly if you need something is not working right. Um, but Lisa does a really good job about putting all the, um, flyers on there and the advertisement with all the contact, um, uh, on there also. Um, so Kayla and Lisa will put all that information on there and get you further information as we go along. Okay. Okay. So, oh, we do this already. Wait, what? Have, uh, what? Uh, okay. Fun fact: A okay. shrimp's heart is located on its head. Thank oh, you, wow. Gloria. That's crazy. Wow. I, don't <laughs> I would have never known that. I'm gonna write the M fact. Will be featured. Yes. <laughs> With credit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, how to connect with um, your advisor. So um, you could schedule a Zoom meeting with your peer advisors, um, with either one, we have contact information here. So you can email them directly. We also have um, an email, advising email, that's abi-advising at ucdavis.edu. And that one actually comes to all three of us at the same time. So you may get a response from Lisa and may get a response from me. Or, you know, maybe, um, you know, Kayla will send you information, but generally, you know, we'll, we'll all see those so that we can make sure that we're replying to you in a timely manner. Um, Lisa and Kayla have both um, put their emails on here also, so you can email them directly also if you'd like. Um, they don't mind doing that. Um, you can schedule an appointment with me generally when we are on campus, but right now we're in some special circumstances. So you can email me. Um, you can schedule an appointment with me to meet with me for advising, um, to ask questions, um, just to, you know, if you just want to talk, you know, you can email, you know, schedule an appointment. Um, then uh, you do that through OASIS or through actually appointments.ucdavis.edu through the OASIS portal. Um, also on the bottom of my signature line in my email, there's a link to my direct calendar. So there's a lot of different ways um, you can find us. Uh, the peer advisors do drop-in hours also. Um, they'll announce whenever they're doing drop-in, and we will drop do drop-in. I will have 
drop in hours also during the quarter they'll uh, announce and just open up my zoom for a couple of hours and then you guys can just drop in and ask questions um because generally um that's my kind of like you know open office hours type thing and i have a walk-in office hours you can walk into my office anytime and ask a question um don't hesitate to answer you know to ask us questions if you have um need to know something specific we'll direct you in the right places we'll um, get you all the information and where to find it and we'll give you you know direct you where you need to go um so if we have any questions you guys can continue putting them in the chat for us um i see someone asked uh let's see when they can expect to hear back from the peer advisors um generally we check our emails during our office hours like right now it's kind of just like as things go we've been a little busier with orientation lately so our response time might be a little slower um but generally you shouldn't have to wait more than like a day or two for a response depending on who you email um like if you contact us personally it might be a little faster um depending on what your question is Right. Okay. Um, somebody else has a, a animal fun fact here. There's so many animal fun facts. How really great. good fun Having facts. Some great fun facts. This is fantastic. Very interesting. I really, I really like the one about the, the feather colors. Right? Apparently cool. it's called structural coloration. That's Honestly, wow. I'm learning so much right now. I, I, so am I. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> This is so cool. Oops. Okay. Sorry. One too many ahead. Okay. Kayla, you want to go ahead? Or yes. Okay. Okay. So um, I see a question about finding animal internships uh, amid COVID. And a good research for finding internships is the Internship and Career Center, uh, which is the ICC. Um, there are a lot of acronyms, so that's why I try to say their names and their acronyms because there's so many resources on campus, honestly. Um, so they are still providing assistance for like resumes, for preparing for interviews, for finding jobs and internships. And if say you don't know what you really wanna do with your major, you can go to the Internship and Career Center and they can help give you some assistance on finding what career works best, will work best for you. Um, the Transfer and Reentry Center, for the transfer students that we have, there is actually a center specifically for you guys, um, and it's for all transfer or reentry students. Um, they are still having virtual services, so you can uh, schedule a Zoom appointment with their peer advisors or their transfer advisors, um, and you could look all of this up on just like look up the name and it'll take you straight to their website. Also, what I will definitely be using uh, for fall quarter is the Academic Assistance and Tutoring Center. They are also still providing virtual services and this is tutoring for basically all our really hard classes that we have to take <laughs> as uh, our major, which is like math, chemistry, biology, physics, and even writing since there is, you know, the English requirement. So if you are uh, looking for some tutoring help, you're finding it difficult to, you know, uh, stay up to date in classes and stuff. I believe the Academic Assistance and Tutoring Center also holds the workshops each week, right? Yes, they do. Right, yeah. So they hold workshops and the workshops follow uh, what you're learning in the class for that week. So um, for like, if you're taking chemistry and you're learning about cells or so, galvanic cells, you'll be going over that that week. So um, the workshops I really recommend because it helps you stay on track and um, stay and stay ahead because online classing um uh, it can be kind of hard to uh you know stay up to date on everything <laughs> uh, yeah okay okay so just real quick to add on to what kayla said about the academic assistance and tutoring center um i always recommend that students uh, make an appointment early on um or or you know check out the tutoring center um for some of your classes that you're taking now because all of your um preparatory subject major um 
uh, science courses, they have tutoring for um, all of them. So you can do drop-in tutoring, you can meet with a, um, a specialist, also schedule an appointment with them. Um, and it's nice for you to check out to see how it is and to make sure you're comfortable. There's other ways, you know, you can do drop-in office hours with your TA or your, um, your professor also, if you need it, uh, you know, have any questions. I always tell students, um, go to your TA and your professor after you've taken an exam. If you didn't do as well as you thought and go kind of discuss it with them, sometimes it's just one little thing. So those are things that will help you uh, along the way. Um, and don't hesitate to seek help. Um, everybody is completely online. So all of our centers, all of our, um, all of our resource, student resources that we have, um, have great um, online resources. They have a way for you to schedule with people. So everything is available online to you, um, just like if you were actually there in person. Um, okay, and if you have any questions, keep letting us know in the, in the chat. And we're having some great information on Animal Fun Fact. Um, Seriously. Um, and we have a question about when will ABI 50A and, and 50C be available. Um, so ABI 50A generally is in the fall, but it's a lab practice class. So we had to move it to the spring. So both of them will be taught in the spring. You could take them out of order. So there isn't any specific order that you have to take them in. Um, so they will be taught. Uh, so ABI 50 will be taught in the spring with ABI 50 a and C, sorry, I didn't say that right, but ABI 50A and, and C, and then ABI 50A will go back to its normal schedule um, next fall and be taught in the fall again. Um, so that that's, um, so currently right now for winter, uh, fall and winter is ABI 50B will be taught and then in the spring, um, 50A and 50C. Okay. I had, there's another, do we need? Um, so transfer students, you will be taking um, ABI 187 in the winter quarter. Um, it's offered fall and winter. Um, so the transfer students, you will definitely be taking that in the winter quarter. And if you have any of the questions, feel free to let us know. Um, uh, Dr. Kimsey, our master advisor, is actually the instructor of that course. And you will get to meet him there. And he is funny. He's a forensic entomologist. He is a great professor, always very helpful. You can always email him or um, go, you know, ask him questions, and he's very, very helpful. And he really loves students, our students, and he really um, likes getting to know you. Um, and he has a unique quality where he has a conversation with you, and he'll remember every conversation he had with you at the end when he's reading your final paper or he's meeting with you. He'll say, oh, I remember we talked about this. And as soon as he opens your anything scientific, he remembers every conversation he had with you. Um, I mean, it's amazing. He amazes me how much he remembers of each one of our students. Um, so let's go on to the next slide. OK. So Kayla, you want to go on with this? Yes. OK. Yes. OK. So um, what I definitely want to make sure that we all prioritize is our personal wellness. Um, virtual learning is quite different from going in person, sitting down, you know, having different rooms to go to, et cetera, et cetera. So here are just a few things that I found really helpful when um, I was doing virtual learning in spring quarter. Um, yoga and meditation uh, and you don't have to like go out and really do like yoga and you don't have to go out and like buy a whole yoga mat and join a class and stuff but honestly just getting up from your chair and stretching is so important like just sitting in this if you're going to be sitting in front of a, a computer for hours just get up and you know stretch you know try as much as you can to uh, just relax and have some time for yourself. Maybe have a space specifically where you can just get away from everything else. Um, I also recommend taking a walk. If you're in Davis, uh, the Arboretum is a perfect place to go explore. Uh, you could social distance go with some friends. Um, so taking a walk and getting outside, especially while it's still nice outside, unless it's still like fiery where you are. Um, go outside and taking a walk is a really good uh, stress relieving practice. And riding your bike. Uh, Davis is a bike town. So sometimes I just get on my bike and just 
explore explore places that I didn't even realize that are in Davis. So like you can go to downtown Davis, you can check out the campus, you can there's so many places to go. Um and reach out to friends. We are making friends today. Uh and we've already discussed how we can uh contact each other so we can reach out to each other on the discord we can reach out to each other through the facebook group etc cetera, etc cetera. just make sure that you still have your support system and people to depend on when you're doing this virtual learning and um journaling is also really cool because if you're really stressed out and everything's going on in your head etc cetera, etc cetera, sometimes it's just really nice to get it on paper and it's just like, oh, okay, this isn't as bad. I can take it one step out of time. Or now that I wrote this out, I feel a lot better about this class or this, you know? So journaling is also a really cool uh, practice. Um, using planners, okay. Please, if you don't already have a planner or, or you're using Google calendars or some sort of like platform, put in, what time your classes are going to meet. Put in uh, your assignments, put in your midterms, put in your quizzes. Because, uh, you know, having everything all on Canvas, it can be really hard to remember, oh yeah, I do have an assignment due tomorrow, or my midterm is next week. You know, there's so many things that to uh, stay on top of. So using a planner, please do, please do, because that will definitely help. And, and like I said, stay connected, stay connected with us. If you have any questions, big or small, um, like I said, you can email the animal biology advising email, you can email us. To oh, I think we're losing Kayla. Um, so we, we can't quite hear her, she's kind of cutting out a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of take over until she can come back. So the, the use of the yeah, planner, like, oh, there she goes. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So you, Kayla, you cut out a little bit there. Um, so like the end. Yeah. Kind of like oh, was, the end. Oh, okay. I was just saying, um, like everyone is struggling with virtual classes. So don't feel like you can't reach out for help. Um, that's what we're here for. And that's what your peers are here for. And oops. Yeah. Um, let me go back. Oops. Wrong. Let me go back one thing. Okay. So the, the thing about using planners, I'd like to also, so mainly definitely encourage you to reach out. You know, we've had some offers already of students that have saying, you know, that they want to get together with other students. Um, this is a yeah. great way to do that. Um, our plan is um, generally we would have study nights four times a quarter. So what I'm we're thinking of doing, um, we've kind of come up with some ideas. And if you have any suggestions, please send them to us. You know, let us know of any suggestions that you guys would like us to do throughout the quarter to keep everybody connected and, you know, build community and get you guys, you know, meeting other ABI students, not just um, uh, new incoming transfer or freshmen, uh, first year students that are just coming in like you now, but other students too, you know, to interact with, with um, seniors already or anybody and, and get to know more transfer students and build a, you know, a stronger transfer community between that um, in our major. But Using your planner is um, important, and I tell students, um, you know, if you have other things going on, you, you put everything about, it's, about it's not just about, um, you know, uh, you know, classes and everything else. If you, you know, you have a life outside of classes sometimes, so you want to make sure you schedule everything. If you have a job, going back and forth to your job, if you have something, and you have to remember to stop to eat. So, you know, you have to, you know, even if you have to pencil that into your planner, because you get so busy going from class to class and, and doing homework and things, and and a good suggestion is to find a place, you know, even if you can sit outside for a little while and, and do a little bit of homework in between classes, you know, to get you out of your room is great. Um, you can plan that um, homework time in between classes. You can pencil that into your schedule. So remember all those other things that you don't quite think about when you're, you know, having a busy day um, and stuff. There's places, you know, we have a pantry on campus. If you ever, you know, need a snack, you can go by there and pick something up. We have lots of... Um, different things, but find a comfortable place outside of your dorm room if you can be outside for a little while, um, just to kind of get you out of your room and, and out in the fresh air a little bit, um, where you can stay safe, social distancing. Um, we have hammocks. Oh, actually, I don't know if they have the hammocks out right now or not, but 
Oh, oh yeah, I think they might have taken them down. And they might have taken them down, but we do have hammocks in the quad where you can go and you know hang out, read, take a nap uh, when we get back to on campus um, on not um, this whole social distancing. So they're probably not there now. Um, I don't think they're there. So um, please keep asking us questions. Keep letting us know things. There was a question back a while ago, and I forgot what it was now. Um, oh, um, there was a question about right. internships and volunteering, yeah. and somebody kind of answered that. But um, we recommend that your first quarter here that you don't um, do an internship, but your second quarter, by all means, you know, if you want to do volunteer, there's always places you can volunteer. There's a lot of um, internship opportunities um, and different things that you can do. Um, I know that Lisa volunteered at the Raptor Center for a while, or still does, um, yep. and Kayla works that I don't remember but anyway they could tell you about what what, what they've done and then, yeah. yeah you know the different volunteer options that they you know things that they've done and where they participated and stuff and everything else so yeah um, so definitely and we encourage you definitely get, you know get an internship early um uh see what you like out there if there's somebody specific or something you're very interested in um you can always reach out to that that lab or that person specifically and if not like you know we have a lot of things that come out in the newsletter um, plenty of opportunities yeah. and and there are opportunities all over campus so um you don't have to be within that major or anything else the students can do um volunteer or do internships at any department that are you know that have openings um you can actually even live at the barns for a quarter um and take care of the, the sheep or the cows or the pigs we've had students do that before also um in the past so those are other opportunities that you have okay so um, next, we're going to play a game. Right, Lisa? Yep. yep. OK. OK, let's see. So I think we're done with like all of the content of our presentation. So to close out, we're going to do a last thing so we can finish getting to know each other and do a quarantine bingo. So what's going to happen is we're going to be put into breakout rooms one more time. And I think this time, it should be it should be like three breakout rooms and one of us advisors will screen share this bingo and when we screen share you guys should be able to find stamps to annotate and we'll try and do a blackout and see which room has done the most of what's on here okay can i um at the end we're going to answer some of the questions that are coming in in the chat i see that there's more questions and we'll yeah. Have, um, right, yeah. Uh, questions and answers at the end after this game so we'll have um, extra time to ask all the questions, but I, I know that there's one here about pre-vet that I'd like to kind of share and advertise our pre-vet orientation also. So we'll, we're gonna get to some of your questions in the chat after, after our game. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So Lisa, are we? Are yeah, we let's go into breakout rooms now. And Elvira okay. and Kayla, I both, sent, I both sent you the PDF of this. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me pull cool. mine up. Cool. Okay. Let me. Um, are you going to ass assign breakout rooms? Do you want me to? Uh, can you? Uh, I don't have the authority to do okay. that. Can you do that? Sorry. Yes. Yes. Okay. So. And I have some unassigned people here, so. Okay, is everybody? Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm trying to find my, the, um, link that Lisa just sent me for the game. Um, so when we get started, if everybody can turn off their mics just so we don't have a lot of background noise and then we'll kind of open things and I'll try to remember to open mine before I start talking since I always, always end up start talking and forget that I actually did it. So, um, so let me find, she sent me the link she said. Oh, there it is, okay. Let me 
Let me see if I can do this here. Um, trying to share my screen again. So, oops, I lost you guys. Sorry. Um, Okay, so, oops. So what we're doing is, let me get back to my instructions here. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we, I downloaded the file um, so you can all see it. And then we're gonna use stamps to fill in, um, find stamps under the view options at the top of the screen. And then, um, Who's calling out? Okay, so um, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna, uh, so this is an interactive game. So we're gonna kind of call out um, an old friend. So one of you will do, so went on Zoom um, without pants. So has anybody ever gone on, uh, you know, went on a Zoom meeting without pants? That's, you know, so we're gonna do that. And we're going to see who can fill in the home. So you're going to fill in a little um, annotation, the little stars or whatever you want on that one if you did that, so that we can fill up and see who fills up the home fastest. Does that make sense? Does that make sense on how we're playing? Oh, this is kind of small. Make this bigger too. Um, how we're playing the game. So we're going to um, kind of go through and it's We have to fill the whole card. So I'm going to say who has done this and and um, so I'm going to read one of the little things, got a new pet, and then we'll, whoever received a new pet, we'll put an annotation on that. And then whichever uh, breakout room fills up their card fastest um, is the winner. Did we get all that? Okay. Does everybody understand? Okay. Um, uh, bought, uh, bought a puzzle. So who bought a puzzle since quarantine time? Anybody? Can you put the, oops, sorry, did that again. So can you guys see the, um, the, the, the puzzle, no? Oh, okay. So let's see here. Do this the right way. Here it is. Okay. There. Now, can you guys see it? Can you see it? Okay. Okay. So you can all see it now. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, and I got some, oops, okay, so who has brought in a puzzle, um, during the quor during quarantine? So this is all about quarantine bingo. So during the time that we've been on quarantine, um, has anybody bought in a puzzle? No you one? want us to say it in the chat or? No, to... no you want to use your annotations to see, uh, so bought a puzzle, people put hearts, um, and stuff. So you just use an annotation and that's how we fill it up. Okay. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So then, um, went on a Zoom without pants. Anybody? All right. <laughs> I think we're, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, um, watch Tiger King. Uh, I don't know what that is, but okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, apologize for a sneeze. Okay. Um, attended, um, attempted to cook. Whether it was good or bad, just the attempt is what counts. All right. <laughs> um, slept for over 10 hours straight. Now, no, nobody does that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, see, I like that. <laughs> okay, that's it, let's see. Um, had a social distancing picnic. Oh, even a couple of people. Oh, you guys are great and creative. I Really creative. This is great. It's good to see that everybody's out doing something. Um, started exercising. That's good. That's good. I take my dogs for a walk. That's my enough exercise, I think. Um, went three days without showering. Now let's be honest now. <laughs> okay. Um, got a new pet. Um, okay. Oh, grew out your hair. 
I think most of us, we even whether we wanted it to grow out or not, we ended up having it grown out anyway during this time. I forgot to mute on Zoom. I've done that many times. Or forgot to unmute myself, actually. Okay, what about stopped exercising? Okay, um, called an old friend. Wow, that's great. We have some good, good um, responses here. So it looks like a lot of people fell asleep during a Zoom call class. Okay, here's a good one. Regretted an Amazon purchase. Okay. Deep clean your room or a part of your house during the time that you were home or something. Um, let's see here. Downloaded, oh, downloaded TikTok. Okay, that's dangerous. I had never really been on TikTok too much, so about two months ago, my granddaughter showed me. And you could spend hours on that just watching stuff. It is so funny. I, I just got really hooked. Wake up after one o'clock. Not too many, huh? I would, yeah, if I could, I'd sleep all day, but I could never sleep too late. Um, played Animal Crossing. Okay, started a new hobby. Okay, here's a good one. Ran out of toilet paper. You know, when everybody was uh, scrambling to the stores and buying up every toilet paper package they possibly could. Um, did you guys experience that in your towns? Um, went to a virtual game night. Yeah, the advising team, one of our um, advisors that recently left started a Jeopardy game. And once a, once a month we would get together, the advising team would all get together with our peer advisors and play Jeopardy. And somebody would pick up topics and stuff. So it was a lot of, it's a lot of fun. Um, Google COVID-19 symptoms. <laughs> Everybody, I think, right? Okay. Wake up less than one minute um, before a meeting. So we've all done quite a bit of this stuff then, definitely. Okay. Um, I think the one that has the least was um, what zoom in our um, without pants, it looks like maybe. Yeah, or bought a puzzle, one of those two, but all the other ones sound great. So any, any comments on our, our questions here? Okay, so let me um, take us out of the breakout rooms so that hopefully everybody's finished um, by now. And if not, then um, let's see here. Breakout room. What? Okay. So we all. Hi, Elvira. Hi there. Hi, Kayla. Hi, Kayla. So, so um, I I wasn't reading the questions as fast as I probably should have, you know. So, but a lot of takers. Um, we filled it up quickly. So, who was done first? Does anybody, any of us, we know who might have been finished first? I let everybody out of the breakout room, and you guys were already standing there looking at me. So, I'm sure that you know. Yeah. Oh, we finished. We finished pretty early. Did you? Okay. Okay. So you were just kind of <laughs> hanging out and talking. All right. So, yeah. um, what was your least? Um, uh, what was the, the question that had the least um, uh, little uh, annotations uh, on it? I think for ours, it was going on Zoom. Oh wait, no. I think only one person got a new pet, and, and like three people, three people went on Zoom without pants. Okay, our, ours was. Yeah, we had, that was kind of our um, least one also, but we still had a, a, probably like eight or nine people on there that did that, you know, yeah. so, yeah. So. May or may <laughs> not have included myself. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't include myself on any of them, <laughs> but I did admit that I did do a lot of that, so. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so right now we're going to go ahead and start answering some questions from the chat. Um, so I hope that you guys like the program and we have a lot of, I know you've had a lot of questions and we've only covered um, some of those things. 
Uh, we covered some of them at our first um, introductory orientation. So we're, we'll take all the questions we have. We appreciate you guys showing up here and, and you know, participating with us and having some fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this time that you spent with us. Um, and the most important thing is I know that you've had a really busy week with a lot of Zoom calls. And I know that that can be, you know, tiring after a little while. So I appreciate you guys and I appreciate all the comments in the um, in the chat. So we're going to go ahead and start answering questions um, from the chat. So we have that. Let me open mine up. Um, and we had a couple back. I want to go back to a couple that we had um, a little bit earlier. Okay, so there was a vet school um, question um, about as a pre-vet student, what is greater in value working um, at an internship or doing research in a lab? Well, first, the research part of it, I'll, I'll answer the whole question, but the research part is really, I mean, we're a research university. So doing research in a lab is going to definitely benefit you quite a bit because when you go out to do, whether you're going to go to vet school or you're going to go out into industry or grad school, you're going to be working, number one, you're going to be working with a team. You know, research is done with a team, so you'll be working in a team just like you would doing research here. Um, you'll make great connections. You'll um, learn about the industry. You'll get to meet people. You may um, be invited to attend a conference somewhere um, from, you know, from the lab that you're with. You'll collaborate with visiting scholars, with graduate students. Um, you'll really make some you know great connections and and really good and then plus at the end of doing your actual research project you're going to write a paper and that really i think um sets you apart from you know not doing research it really is a, a great benefit and it's a great experience um and our major does have the research uh, component and students kind of think oh i don't know if i want to do that you know um, you know, I, you know, that sounds kind of scary. It sounds like a lot of work. It sounds like, you know, things, but the best thing about it is you really get to mold the major into an emphasis of your choosing in your junior year. So you actually get to kind of create your own major at that point, because you're going to end up with writing a research, experiencing research, writing a research paper. Um, you will also have a specialization when you graduate within that research. Um, and not only that, a lot of times we've had students um, being published before they graduated. We've had several students um, submitting publications after they graduated over the summer. So from that practicum project that you're doing, you can also be published. And then published. And other publications when um, the whole project is over at the end, when um, whoever your day-to-day -day mentor or graduate student you're working with, along with anything. So a lot of our faculty encourage you to um, and we need to, to, to do the undergraduate research conference and to present your work at the undergraduate research conference in the spring. You know, um, some students have opportunities to go to different places to present your research. So it's a big deal for undergraduates to do the level of research that you're doing and to be able to present it um, at, you know, at conferences or at the undergraduate research conference. Now, for pre-vet, um, I don't know if you guys got my invitation. I'll be sending it out again. We have a pre-vet orientation um, Zoom on the, on um, October 8th in collaboration with the vet school, the Health Professional Advising Center, who are our leading authority advisors for vet school and professional schools, grad schools. You can schedule an appointment with them at any point in time. Their, um, their website is hpa.ucdavis.edu, and it has a whole section on vet school, med school. It kind of uh, everything you need to know about anything is there. Um, and then the animal um, related uh, advisors will also give a small presentation of their majors at the end of this. So I highly recommend for you to, uh, you to, um, to join the webinar if you can. It's in the evening um, on October 8th and I'll send out the flyer again um, later today um, as a reminder and, and a couple of days before the actual event. So really, um, it's beneficial for you to do volunteer work. If you can fit it into your schedule, and I don't mean the first quarter, you know, after there was another question if freshmen should do um, volunteer work right away. Um, we generally let you know, you know, get acclimated to the quarter, the first quarter, get used to things. And then after your first quarter, during your second quarter, at any point in time, you can look for an internship or volunteer time. And I think they're equally important. Like I said, the, the research is definitely important. Um, but doing volunteer work is very important so that you can get that experience, make those connections. Um, and, and you can do more than one volunteer, you know, throughout 
the time that you're there. Some of them are only a certain amount of time. The same thing with research, I mean, with internships. And internships are a good way, a good way. to get into research. Um, you know, if you start in a lab that you really like or are interested in, then you can also start talking to them about doing research in that lab. Um, Lisa and Kayla, do you want to add anything to that? Um, it looks like there's a lot of questions. Okay. Um, okay. Someone was asking about when to start looking for like volunteering and internships as a freshman. Um, my personal advice would be, yes, you should take it easy your first quarter of freshman year just so you can get yourself acclimated to classes and you don't have as many, you don't have time constraints that are holding back um, you from learning, socializing, all that type of stuff. Um, but after that, anything is fair game. A lot of places actually look for people who are a little earlier in college um, or people who have less experience just because college is a time to learn. And you know, sometimes a blank slate is better um, depending on who's hiring, you know? Um, and like, personally, I didn't have any problems Ha like finding internships or volunteering opportunities in my first year um, because I was a freshman everyone was kind of treated uh, the same um, however uh, do you know that applying for these things you usually have to do a quarter in advance though um, so it's good to look now but whether you want to start volunteering now is up to you Um, and I'd also, just to add to that, I would say uh, be open-minded. Um, I did not think that I would be doing my research on, uh, you know, like large animals and stuff. And it's actually been really a great experience having, uh, just having more experience with uh, different animals. So even if you come in with this idea that, oh, you want to do this specific thing, there might be a lab or an internship or a, a volunteer experience that really catches your eye. So just go for it, honestly, because you you never know. And it might be something that you really um, grow to really like and enjoy. And also don't, I would, I would say as a freshman, do what you know you can handle. Um, they're honest, like you can start looking for internships and, you know, volunteering and stuff uh, during your freshman year. But if you're still finding that your transition to college, you know, is a little harder than you thought, there really is. Um. I think we, we lost, um, Kayla, we couldn't hear you towards the end there. I don't hear know me? what happened. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, we, I can now, but I kind of lost yeah. you. Uh, I was okay. just saying that uh, just don't, don't, don't overload your schedule. Like if you don't feel that you can handle an internship at the time, then, you know, just uh, be kind to yourself. <laughs> don't overload your plate. Okay, let's see what else we have going on here. Um, um, I see, but what if you're a transfer? Do you still have to wait a quarter to start an internship? Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, that's just kind of a recommendation so that you can get, um, you can start looking for internships now. Um, and like Lisa said, you usually start, um, you have to apply for them the quarter before you're going to start. So it's a good time if you want to do that. Um, with in, with transfer students, you know, usually you come in, you hit the ground running, and you're ready to, you know, start doing that, the internship. So feel free to um, check out the Internship Career Center, um, ask us questions. We have some recommendations. Um, I tell students, reach out to the specific labs. Is there, if there's a specific lab or faculty member that you'd like to work with, you can always email them. Make sure you do your background work. Make sure you're prepared um, when you contact them about, you know, if they don't have a specific advertising because what I always ask students, what's going to set you apart from the person that walked in behind you, before you, or behind you um, for that same position, that same internship, or wanting the same thing? So make sure you do a little bit of research, um, look at their lab websites, um, you know, reach out to some of the graduate students on there. Graduate students are great about, you know, talking about their research if you ask them questions or different things. Um, and like I said, internships really are a good way of leading into research opportunities um, in, uh, in different labs 
um, that you have. And you can do research. Um, you can, you can, a lot of students say, well, am I going to have hands-on animal experience? So you could do research or internships, like I said, in any department. You could take any courses, so you don't have to be a specific major. You could do research or an internship at the Primate Center, at the Raptor Center. We have lots of, at the, uh, we have a lot of different centers associated. Uh, we have a welfare center associated with the vet school. Um, so you could do internships and volunteer just about anywhere. And we have some student-run clinics also. Yeah, and I think what's most important right now is that you start looking. Um, it's not as much as a matter of like when you want to start, but it's a matter of finding what you want to do and seeing like how your schedule can line up with what you want to do. And um, there was a question about, you know, if you're not on campus, how do you find, you know, how do you do that to, you know, volunteer or stuff? Um, because we're, you're not on campus, a lot of the labs do have um, opportunities for you to, to do some things in the lab to shadow um, grad students in there virtually. Um, so there are opportunities. You can always just email and say, you know, what kind of opportunities do you have during this time where, you know, we could do it um, on Zoom. So a lot of our students um, are meeting with their mentors on Zoom, getting information about the research that they're doing, um, all via Zoom and, and online platforms. Okay. And then I saw there was a question about um, keeping track of your experience and hours in case you want to apply to vet school or grad school. Um, personally, what I highly recommend everybody do is start your own spreadsheet and log your hours yourself. Um, like every every little thing, even if it's just like volunteering at a place for a couple of weeks, um, because let's see, um, because when you apply to vet school, uh, I found that when they ask you for your experience hours, they ask you like how many weeks you worked at this place and about how many hours a week you, um, about how many hours a week like you went there. Um, so it's a lot of estimation. So if you have like a accurate idea of what you did. Um, you'll be able to report it more accurately. And I don't really know if they check unless you seem kind of sketchy, um, but like they do ask for contact information of your supervisors and stuff. So make sure you have that type of information with you at all times too. And, and again, just emphasis about the um, Health Professional Advising Center, you know, um, feel free to, to reach out to them and make an appointment with them. It's nice because they have a lot of um, different events that they do throughout the quarter, every quarter. Um, and they'll focus on first year students and, and do different things for each year here. Same thing, transfer students. There's a lot of opportunities um, and, and they have a different skill set. You know, they, a, a, they'll help you put a schedule together so that you, um, um, at the end, you're a better candidate, you're better prepared, and you have everything that you need. So continue to meet with them. And then Monica asks if we, you need a reference from vet, from a vet. Yes, you do. Almost all vet schools require, I, like, I don't want this to be like a pre-vet thing, but like almost all vet schools will require you to have a letter of rec from one veterinarian. Um, and like some X amount of hours of experience working with them. And, and I remember seeing a question about the CDG program. Um, I don't know where that was. It was quite a ways of, during our presentation. Do anybody else remember that? Um, We'll look through the chat and I'll answer those um, afterwards also if we don't get to it. Um, let me see here. Something, I remember seeing it. So if I don't, um, uh, we don't answer that. We have about three minutes left. Um, so that we'll, and then we'll, oh, there it is. We'll go ahead and answer questions after that. So, um, should you be worried if you don't have a CDG canvas? Um, it was one of the questions. Um, well, you're assigned to your, your Canvas, correct, Lisa? You, you get, once you're enrolled, you get assigned there? Yeah, uh, a lot of the times professors don't post their Canvas page until like the very last second. And some of them don't really use it at all, but I'm pretty sure they all will during, you know, coronavirus. Um, so don't worry if it's like not up yet, it should be fine. Right, and if you are um, waitlisted, at all in CDG, um, you probably got an email from me sending you a PTA to um, add the class. So if you need a PTA reissued or anything like that, please let me know. Um, I'm 
I'm making sure that everybody that I sent PTAs to this last week um, has been enrolled. So, um, and if you need more information, feel free to reach out to me or to the C to G um, director also. Um, let's see here, what else? Um, so this recording will be posted on our website um, in a day or two, we're gonna kind of get the kinks out. So we will be posting it on our website so you, it can be viewed again if you have any questions or you know, just wanna uh, review what we went over. Um, and again, we love suggestions. Um, as you're here, let us know, um, you know, any suggestions you have and again, connect with each other. And then we'll be sending out information about some fun things that we're gonna be doing um, to try to connect either a wellness or maybe a, a craft project just to get us together and, instead of our study nights that we used to do, that we normally do. We'll go ahead and do that soon. Um, thank you everybody for coming. We had a great, um, a great time. I hope you did too. And I hope that you guys had a great time and take care and we'll be in touch and reach out to us anytime. Kayla, Lisa. Um, yeah, I think, I think that wraps it up for us. Um, we have, I know we didn't get to get to all of our questions today. There were a lot, um, but we'll be answering questions in the later half of today. Um, that's kind of like a free for all for questions. Oh, yes, really. thank you. So this afternoon it is optional if you want to come. Um, we're going to have an opportunity where you can actually ask Lisa and Kayla um, more questions about their experience at UC Davis, um, you know, since they're both in their senior years now, correct? Right? I think I got that right. Yeah. And, and um, um, so that you can ask them specific questions and things, and then we'll be able to answer a lot more of these questions also. Okay. All right. We'll see you this afternoon if you decide to come. Thank you. Hope to see you there. Bye.